My views and the views in this video and any of these videos in my channel, on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, everything are not reflected in the State Department, the Fulbright Association, IIE, embassies, government, government, anyone. This is just Oyen's mind, Oyen's channel, doing what Oyen thinks and want to share about her life and her experiences. Just me. I don't speak for anyone but myself. <laughs> now that's <laughs> now that that's done. Like Go diver, you're so sweet to me. Go diver, you're my everything. Oh, go diver, you're so sweet to me. Go diver. Welcome back to my channel, Honey Zarina Joe. My name is Oyen, and I am the honey that you so much needed in your life. I'll keep working on it. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. So I wanted to make this video real quick. Hopefully, it's quick. Just kind of answer some questions that I get asked all the time, which are understandable. A lot of people are wondering, like, what in the world are you doing? Why are you doing it? I'm like, why? What? Like, it doesn't make sense. So I just kind of wanted to break down exactly what I'm doing. <clears throat> so uh, from the in the title in the video, you kind of see that I am a Fulbright ETA. ETA just means English Teaching Assistant. I have notes, so if I again, if I look down, it's they're upside down. <laughs> it's because I wrote them. <laughs> so a lot of people are like, "What in the world is a Fulbright ETA?" Um, and a Fulbright ETA is simply a program for U.S. students to go to other countries. To teach English so like I said ETA means English teaching assistant and we are just English teaching assistants in countries that don't speak a lot of English or whose primary language isn't English um, there's so many countries but the cool thing about Fulbright which I really like it's an exchange program right so they're US students who study do research <clears throat> our professors who are like us who are recent grads who teach English and there's also different programs for people in those countries to come to the United States so they can go get their master's degree, they can teach, um, Engl I, not English, but maybe the uh, different languages, they can be professors, they're like so many different programs so it's literally when I say exchange it's like every year there are people coming here and people going there which I think is really cool. Um, so why did I start doing this? <laughs> People always ask me, oh, so you're like an English teacher, or you're a teacher, and I'm like, no. Like, oh, so you studied to be a teacher in university. Nope. And people are like, wait, did you want to be a teacher? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> um, so I kind of got involved with the Fulbright just because I understood it as what it is. It's a form of self-diplomacy. And for people who are not international relations majors or minded, self-diplomacy is simply like diplomacy, but disguised as something else. So it's, I wouldn't even say it's disguised, but <clears throat> it's a way of developing understanding and positive relationships with another country, but not by saying, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm from the United States and I'm here to make you more better friends with the United States. Like, no. So in a way that's helpful and that um, positively impacts, positive, <laughs> positively impacts both countries, both cultures, both communities, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I thought that was super cool because who wants to go to war? No one. My position, I'm not a teacher, so I'm not responsible for all the seventh graders to be ready for the eighth grade. I work with students who are behind, students who want to improve. I do a lot of tutoring, which is fun because I just act like we're hanging out and then they learn and it's really fun. So I'm there's a lot less pressure, so I actually have the time to sit one-on-one -on -one and get to know the students I work with. Um, and then make their learning experience more pleasurable, which makes me like feel like I'm doing something um, of value. So that's fun. So like I said, I'm not a teacher, <laughs> but I've learned a lot. Oh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> For our pre-departure orientation, we did like a crash course on lesson planning and activities, which was, I did it June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, seven months before I actually came to Honduras. So in January, I had to realize, what did I learn? How do we do this? What are some ideas? So I was blessed to go with a cohort of people in Central America who were in 
incredible. They're amazing and they made this experience so much better. And we help each other, we support each other, we talk to each other. Um, yeah, they're really cool. So that helped a lot. Um, <clears throat> And then once I got here, Honduras is a very go with the flow kind of place. So I just kind of like went with it and we kind of figured <laughs> figured it out, I guess. So people always ask me, so tell me this about Fulbright or tell me this, like how do I get a Fulbright or how much do you get paid? Yes, we do get paid, but everything is different. I can promise you every country is different. Um, like between the people I, who are in Central America, we all get paid, each country gets paid differently. And even the Fulbright from last year got paid here, like where I am right now, got paid differently than we did. And the people who are coming next are getting paid differently than we did as well. So everything is different, varies by country, by year. So if you ask someone who did a Fulbright in, well, Honduras is new. So if you did a Fulbright in China, and no, let me say Latin American country. China, if you did a Fulbright in Peru in 2001, it's going to be completely different than the Fulbright you do in 2019, obviously. Um, but yeah, they're very different. Um, even my experience compared to the experience of the Fulbright who was in the capital, which is like four and a half, five hours away. Um, <clears throat> her experience was slightly different than mine. Her work schedule was a lot different than mine. She had different responsibilities. It's just very, um, it's hard to say, but um, yeah, it's really hard to say. But I can kind of give you a breakdown of what I do and who I work with. So I work between two different institutions. One is a binational center, high school slash evening school slash public library slash cultural center slash <laughs> that school does everything. And I'm so impressed by that school. It's so interesting. Um, and I work, yeah, that school. And then I work at the public university that is for teachers. So I'll, okay, so at the high school, so the day school is like a private school. The, they have a pre, like a grade school, so I guess it's elementary school. That's bilingual in a high school where they just really push English. Um, and they, at that school, they have, I kind of, sometimes I'll work with the day school students, but I mainly work with the after school program, which is the only thing, I think maybe, there that is fully funded by the embassy. So the school was started by Americans of the embassy and with time has been given over to Honduras. So like it's fully funded and run by Hondurans and it's really interesting. I'm like, I love hearing about stories about when, oh, well, the Americans were the teachers. Then there was a Honduran teacher. Then there are more Honduran teachers. Then I think it was at one point just for girls maybe. And then it kind of blossomed into this like incredible institution that has a great um, reputation in the city which is really cool and that's, that's a beauty that's a those are the beautiful things about diplomacy that i like um so the after school program though is funded by the embassy for students who go to public schools or who aren't as economically advantaged is that a thing economically advantaged i'm trying to say it in a politically correct way who okay so students who are economically disadvantaged in some way shape or form um, who go to public schools and who are leaders and who are incredible and amazing and I love them and amazing and incredible and incredible and incredible and incredible and incredible. <laughs> so they go through this application process, they apply, they have interviews, they get accepted, <clears throat> and it's to learn English. So it's called the English Access Micro Scholarship Program by the U.S. Embassy. Oh no, it's on the shirt. This is the Access t-shirt. I'm going to flip around. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm not, I don't remember what it says. But I think it says something about you. I think it says something. Anyway. Um, so if you want to read it, pause it and go back and look at it. Um, so there are 80, 160, 170 students that are there in two different years. Um, and they learn English. But they don't just learn English. They really dive into different American cultural and values type thing. Kind of talking about um <clears throat> the differences between the united states and honduras ways that the united states is good ways the united states is bad ways that the honduras is good ways the honduras is bad or can be better and what they can bring to making honduras a better place which is amazing like they're gonna change the world um and so they do a lot of leadership things 
they do a lot of volunteering, a lot of out after school programs. So the actual class day is from three to five because they have to do it after their school. Um, but they do so many things after, like on Saturdays, they're there. In the afternoon, sometimes they'll go to the library and be doing different things. They're there in the evenings for performances. So it's way more than just two hours a day, but it's a very, I think, holistic experience for them. So I love working with them. And I didn't realize how much I like high school students until working with them. Like they just bring me so much joy, but I think they're special too. I think they're special. Whatever application process they have for getting these kids is great because I think they're incredible kids and they're easy to work with. Sometimes they talk too much. But other than that, <laughs> so do I, right? Um, oh, at the university. So at the university, I like working with ACCESS students better, if you can't tell. But at the university, I worked with the English program, I guess. And so I kind of assisted in the classes. Um, sometimes I would do activities. <clears throat> but that was mainly like teaching and class. And I'm not a teacher. I think I like being around young people. And I like working on projects. And I like making um, their lives better but teaching is just a way for me to do that so I teach because I want to accomplish X Y and Z with these kids um, but with the university it was just teaching I didn't really get connected with um, with the students as much maybe it's because I started with the high school kids so I kind of like latched on with them and then I started the university later it just wasn't I don't know it wasn't <clears throat> I was more of an English teacher which like Oya and me, I'm not really an English teacher, but that's what I was at the university. So that's what I was doing, which was okay. It was cool. It's cool. But I'm also trying to find other ways to use myself effectively here as an ETA for the university and for the high school. Um, okay, what's next? Yes, we do get paid. Yes, every country, even sometimes cities are different. Like I said, if you're interested in a Fulbright, I would highly recommend that you ask someone who has done a Fulbright ETA in that country in the last like two to three years because um, I think they'll give you more ho um, holistic perspective. Also researchers and ETAs are very different so I kind of sometimes say I'm a Fulbright scholar just because I like the way it sounds and a lot of people don't know what ETAs are but technically they're Fulbright scholars I think it's really confusing. They're Fulbright researchers and they're Fulbright ETAs. Um, and we each have very different goals slash experiences. So if you talk to a researcher, that's great. And they kind of give you a perspective of the process maybe and the re relationship with your embassy person or your supervisor or your commission officer, whatever. I don't know. It's different for every country. But if you want to be an ETA, I would highly recommend you talk to an ETA. If you want to be a researcher, I would highly recommend you talk to a researcher. And if you want to be a scholar, I would highly recommend you talk to a scholar. Um, just, yeah, um, so like I said, this t-shirt is from the high, the access program, um, super cute, it's kind of tight, I was like, I need it, I want a t-shirt, and they're like, what size do you want, I said large, I said, well, we got a medium, I was like, do I look like a medium, so we get a little, I had to stretch it out, you know, like, rabbit trail again, oh look, oh, that's not anything, I don't know what that is. Focus. Okay. Um, okay. So lastly, I want to talk about my favorite things and my least favorite things. So my favorite thing, probably my most favorite thing about my Fulbright ETA experience in Honduras is... <laughs> okay. It is, it is what you make it. That's one thing I love, which when I first got here, I was very confused because it was almost like I was kind of like, what am I supposed to do? But no one knew. No one had an answer. Like, what? And my sister said, well, you're supposed to do this. Work here and here. And I'm like, yeah, but how? You're supposed to work here and here. Yeah, but what times, where I'll go, who I talk to. You're supposed to work here and here. That was all. And after that was like, go. Um, so that was like, okay, spoiler alert. That's also my least favorite thing. So my least favorite thing and my favorite thing are the same. So I was hard for me to figure out what in the world I'm doing and what is my purpose here. Like how, like what do I have to offer to these students? I'm not a teacher. I don't want to be a teacher. Um, I will teach, but like that's not my, my best skill, you know? Like I want to, 
I want to give my best to the program because I want everyone involved to get the best out of me. I don't want to just sit here and, you know, do something that I'm not good at, which I'm a great teacher, by the way. My students love me. <laughs> When I realized though, one thing I realized that I love connecting with people. I love connecting with my students. I love making sure that they understand that they are capable of doing whatever they want. I want to find out what are your goals and how can I make your goals happen? Like what can I do as a Fulbright ATA to make sure that your vision and your, um, your one of what you want to accomplish like actually happens. And one of the things I've done is tutoring. Like that's cool. In the tutoring classes, I talk to students um, in the library, we meet up, we chit chat about what they want to do in the future, all in English, so they're practicing, and I learn more about them, like what scholarships are available in the, uh, the embassy that they're perfect for, that I, well, that I think they're perfect, perfect for, that they should apply for. We go on the website, we look at different things, so I, that's what I love to do in general, and lucky for me, I'm a native English speaker, and they're learning English, so me just doing what I love to do with them in English is helping them learn. Um, which has been amazing. Um, I also like programs. I like putting on events. I like putting on programs. I like that kind of thing. So I did one, which was not bad. I'm going to be doing another one and hopefully another one. Okay, there are three more I want to do before, <laughs> before I leave. And I kind of wish I would have figured this out sooner because I like, that's what I like to do and that's what I can do. And as a Fulbright, I have um, connects. You know, I got the connects, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> well, things that I can make happen that may be difficult for someone else to make happen. Um, but it took a while for me to get comfortable enough to, like, say, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. Will you help me? And they're great. They're like, go for it. We'll see. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, how about this? Have you thought about this? Go for it. Go. So they're super supportive. And I really wish I would have kind of, like, figured that out sooner. But I think part of that... Getting comfortable takes time. It's just unfortunate. It's only 10 months and I'm in month nine. I'm starting month nine, which is crazy. Um, my second favorite thing is traveling. So I have traveled outside of Honduras some, but most of my travels have been within the country and <sighs> Honduras is beautiful. I'm already planning like a trip next year <laughs> back to Honduras because it's so beautiful there. I haven't even, there's so many places I haven't been yet that I wanna to go to. Um, people are so nice, things are super affordable. Like this country has got everything from lakes to mountains to rivers to islands to beaches. Beaches, I love beaches. I love beaches. I love beaches. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also, being a Fulbright ETA, you can't deny it, opens up doors to resources and opportunities. In certain spaces, when I walk in and say I'm a Fulbright ETA, people kind of like, oh, what was that? And so it's like, <laughs> I was a Fulbright. You thought I was an idiot because I was laughing? You thought I was, a, you thought I was dumb because I had my eyebrows done? No, I'm a Fulbright. I'm a full. Yes, sit up straight. What is the song? Nikki? Nikki Mouse? Oh, when I walk in, sit up straight. I don't give up if I was late. Spoiler alert, I'm always late. <laughs> but I'm a Fulbright, so sit up straight. Just kidding. Not at all. Not at all. No, I really am late, but anyway. Let me go. <laughs> it opens doors and gives resources, which is super cool. But now my next least favorite thing um, is not everybody cares. <laughs> so yes, it opens up doors and resources. And sometimes when I walk into a room and say I was a Fulbright, I hear a, oh my gosh, you're a Fulbright? Other times I'm like... <laughs> It's like God's trying to humble me. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Fulbright ETA. And so they're like, what's that? <laughs> or I'm a Fulbright scholar. You're a what? Do you get paid for that? What's that? And I'm like, oh. So I usually sometimes, I usually say like I teach English with the embassy with a program called Fulbright. And then people will say, oh, cool. Or, oh. <laughs> like completely unimpressed, completely don't care. Someone asked if I needed money, like if I needed money, like like to raise support, I guess, because they didn't think I was getting paid. Um, some people asked me like, why? You're, like, you're not a teacher, so like, why are you doing it? Like, how is that gonna help you? And I'm like, 
so I think some people think I'm trying to find myself, which I mean, I have learned a lot about myself and I have kind of not found myself because I already always knew where she was, but kind of learned more about myself in this transitional time. Um, yeah, so that's something I don't like because sometimes I feel like I'm doing something really cool and people, some people are just very unimpressed unimpressed and that really humbles you you know which is good I think it's good um the next thing I don't like about Fulbright oh it's it was difficult for me to kind of try to match the experiences I was having here on my resume in such a way that will appeal to my future employers so yeah I was teaching English but I don't foresee I mean anything can happen knock on wood not knock on wood because it's not a bad thing like I may end up teaching it could be a, it could be a possibility but that's not what I want to do um so it's like I'm teaching English but how is that gonna how is that going to benefit me in this job that I'm hoping to pursue next you know um but with time I kind of figured it out like what like I said I love planning projects um being creative being um taking initiative for those kinds of things and it took me time to kind of figure out how I can word it on my resume that will be beneficial in the next job I have because I've learned so much and I'm still learning and I know how I'm a better future employee because of this experience but being able to kind of relay that to on my resume and in a cover letter was difficult but I figured it out and I think I think I got it I got it um yeah so that's me wow this video is a lot longer than I thought I'm gonna have to edit I, think, I hope I answered a lot of questions so you kind of get an idea of like the day in the life of me so and you see my t-shirt I'm gonna stand up I want you to get the full effect <clears throat> there we go so it's the American flag it's the Honduran flag and it says estamos Unidos, which means we are united. Make sure you like and subscribe. Stay tuned for my other videos.